Um, the first part that I'm going to do here is I'm going to make a part three of this. And the idea that I want to include here was something that somebody asked for, which I thought was brilliant. Um, when I, so if you're not familiar with this shopping cart functionality, the idea is I can start an order that's in the building status and then I can come over to the product page. I can click on a product and now you can see it's now, if I go look at the order, added to my order, but it doesn't have a quantity. I have to come back to my order and then come into here and do this and then I can like do that, right? And now I've got the quantity for what I need. Okay, so uh, I wanna smooth that out. What I wanna do is when somebody first clicks on the product to add it to the order, I immediately want a thing to pop up in your face saying, how many do you want? So that's the first thing that I'm gonna do in this, uh, this the, the rest of this video is I'm gonna go over how can you do an immediate input after you add a record to another table. It's not as straightforward as you think. There's three, four or five steps that you gotta do. So I'm gonna upgrade this um, app, which right now it sits as just a straight clone of the Force Sync app. So I'm just gonna close those, get them out of the way. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this uh, app here and I'm going to include functionality so that when I tap immediately an input dialog, the pop-up that you can get, right, will appear asking me how many of this product do you want, right? Okay, so how do I go about accomplishing that? Okay, there's a few steps that you got to do that. The, the important thing, the key to making this work is uh, the system, like, okay, so you, you're gonna have an action that has the input thing, the input formula for it. So you've got that, but so that's a single action. And then like the idea is I've got to execute that action on the last item that was added to the order. So the first thing that you really have to do in order to get this process started is you have to know what was the last line item added to the order. You a whole bunch of different ways you could do that. Where are you going? Another way. Always another way. Always another way. The way I prefer to do it is to use uh, list, the list that you have in the, uh, the order, uh, whatever your parent is, right? You've got a list of child records. I prefer to use that. Um, and you can just, you can put them in order or you can just rely on the natural order that they're in, whichever you want to do. It depends on the scenario you're doing. Um, and you just pull the last one out of the list. It's actually really easy. Um, so if I go to columns and I go to my parent order and I create, so like here's the list of all of the order details, right? So all I need to know is what's the last one in that list? All right, this is really easy. So if I go, well, first thing I need is the name of the column. So I'll just come here and copy it. Um, so I got my new column. I'm gonna call this last order detail item, right? So my formula, this is where the magic of index comes into play. So what I'm gonna say is I'm gonna index out of this related order details, count related order details. Okay, if you're not familiar with index, the, if you're not familiar with the syntax of index, what there's two parts to it. The first part is you provide it a list. It could be a list of anything. It doesn't matter, a list of numbers, decimals, list of pictures, list of objects, list of text, list of whatever, doesn't matter. The second part is a number. The number means, okay, I have a list, say there's five items in the list. The number is what number item do you want out of the list? So if I put the number four, it's gonna give me the fourth item. If I say number one, it'll give me the first one. If I say count the number of items and then give me that number, Hey, well, if there's five items, it's gonna give me the fifth. If there's 10 items, it's gonna give me the 10th. If there's 552 items, it's gonna give me item 552. So it's constantly giving me the last item. The thing here is that this is a hyper-efficient way of doing things because it doesn't rely on max row. You could use max row, but if you look at, if you dig into how max row works, it doesn't work the way that like a SQL server system would work. When you execute a max row on a SQL server, like there's an index that the SQL server, the person that made the server had to build this in, right? But there's, a, there's an index on that table that says, this is the last item. This is the first item. 
And like, it's that easy. The system already has it. All you gotta do is just say, all right, give me the last one, boop, done. So it's built into the thing. Um, in AppSheet, it's not. And so what happens is when you look into the back end, like the actual code of like, well, what's the actual formula that it's running? If you look in the, like the audit records and everything, it's a nested select statement. It's saying, select for me whatever table you said to select from, where select for me, blah, 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 blah. It's like, yo, mate, you can't do that. Especially if you're gonna have thousands of records, can't do that. That's where this solves all of those sorts of problems. I came up with this sort of little hack, if you will, because I had a, a client where we had literally tens and tens and tens of thousands. We were approaching hundreds of thousands of records and we needed to get what was the last one for like thousands of records. What's the last child record for thousands of parent records? You can only imagine the amount of calculations. I had to find a way to make that more efficient. This is what I came up with. This executes dumb fast, <laughs> dumb fast. And it gives you the last item out of the list. So you hit save, you can see this, it automatically detected that this is a reference to the order detail, sure is. Um, but I don't need this to be a hard reference like this. If I left this alone, it would create a reverse reference of all of these orders inside the order detail. I don't need that. I don't need that reverse reference for this. I really only need this so that I can know what the ID is. And maybe if I want, I could dereference some information out of it if I needed to later. So the thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change this from a reference to an enum base type reference to the same table. Um, I'm going to hide it because I don't need to see it. This is literally just like a system thing that I'm using. Um, I'm going to hit done, hit save. Okay, so now on my order table, I have a column that holds the ID of the last order detail created. Okay, so now the idea then becomes, so if you're familiar with the shopping cart sample app, there is a slice that holds the current order that the person is working on, called building order. Um, so this right here, right? So now this is a slice of my order table and that order table now has the last item. So this slice now has that last item inside it. And so all I need to do is just extract that value out of it. Uh, and that's super simple. So like Close all of these, okay. So what do I need to do? Um, I need to index out of the building orders table. And I want, if I go to my orders, I want the last order detail item. Put that in square brackets. I want one because uh, there's only, there should only be one item in this list because there should only ever be one building order and the building order should only ever have one. See what I mean? So like, as long as everything goes according to plan, everything will work. <laughs> and generally, this never is a problem, right? So this formula bit right here gives me the last order detail that was done. And since it's in a slice, it's basically like a global variable. So I can put that formula anywhere and it's gonna I put that formula anywhere and it's going to extract that piece of data no matter where that's the beauty of slices they're like global variables um so now what do i can do so now that i have this so that i can access well what was the last item that was done now i need the second part of it which is uh, the input to get the quantity right so i can actually use this in a couple of different places like i'm actually going to put it here on the building order detail for like when I click on this record, I, instead of going to the detail, if there is no quantity, I would like it to ask me for the quantity first. And then once I fill the quantity, then when I click on it, then I want it to go to the details. Getting advanced. All right, so how do we do all of that? First part that I need is the actual action that's gonna execute the input part itself. And so that's just a simple data change action with the formula input on the column that we're trying to change. So I'll show you how to do that really quick. We've got go to behavior. We create an action. It needs to be on the order detail table. I always name my 
I always name everything. Like that's usually the last thing I do. So usually it's generally easier to come up with a name for your thing after you've filled out all the details. Just maybe it's me. All right, so order details record. You go to do this, set the column value. The value that we need to do is the quantity. And what we need is input, right? And if you look at the syntax for that, what you do with input is you give it a column and then you give it what should the default value be when we drop into the sort of dialog box that appears. What default value should be inside that column when we're in that view. You with me here? Let me know if you have any questions or if I'm losing you in the comments. I am watching, um, <laughs> just so you know. So input this and the thing that I want this to default to is nothing. So I'm just gonna put two quotes right there. Validate. Um, okay, well, oh, maybe, um, maybe let me check. Does this work yet? Nope. So let me check the document. Maybe I have to put the name in quotes. In fact, I'm probably pretty sure that's exactly what I have to do. Let's see if that validates. There it is. Yeah, and FYI, yeah, this is in beta, so use at your own risk. I I'm kind of liking it though. I'm thinking it's dope. It's getting better and better. It's getting smoother and smoother. It's getting more and more robust. So this will create a dialogue that says, what do you want for this quantity? And it's gonna start with a blank value. So in the quantity, you could make it required to, to advance. Don't wanna do that right now. Don't wanna do that right now. So here's my action, right? Quantity detail. Uh, I'm sorry, detail quantity with an input. Now, I don't need to see this, so I'm gonna hide this guy so that I don't see it. Um, and I'm gonna give it a name. You might be familiar with my naming schemes. Set quantity to input. Yes. And then I'm gonna also put a condition on this to where this should only run. No, you know what, I'm gonna leave this alone because so I was gonna put a condition on this so that it would only run when there's nothing in that value, when there's nothing in that column, right? So like it only worked the first time essentially. Um, the problem that you could run into with that, like I found over time that limiting things generally is something that you should leave to the very end, to the very, very, very end of stuff. Same thing for like the views. Up front, you should spend time making your views look like you need them so that it's easier to work on your app and you can see the data that you need, but you should also show everything at the bottom because you don't know what's still hiding down there that you actually need. Um, but like all of these sorts of, um, well, I don't need to see this at this point, I don't need to see that at this point. Generally speaking, you should save all of that sort of functionality and everything to the very end at least when you're in the beginning right now, leave all of that off and just let it go. The reason why I, I'm second guessing it here is because if I left this, put if I put a condition on this so that it only runs this sort of set quantity input dialog pop-up, when the value is empty, then I can't use this to change the value if there's something there, right? And so now I start thinking, all right, if I wanna do it that way, then instead of this input defaulting to blank, what I really want this to do is I really want this to default to, is it still on my clipboard? No. I really want this to default to whatever value is currently there. Does that work? Hey, it's exactly what I want. So I want an input for the detail quantity where it starts with whatever's already there. So if it's blank, it's blank. If it's two, it's two. It's 400, it's 400. Now I can use this, this single action to not only set it the first time, but then I can also use it to change it if you want. Kind of like that. All right, so I can think of one condition that I am gonna put on this so that it doesn't run when the order is complete, right? So like this is reference connected to an order. And so I'm gonna say order link dot status. Clean up the middle bit when that equals building. 
And I'm gonna go make sure that that's the actual value that I used. So go to orders, I have an order status, building, perfect, okay. So I can set this quantity and I can use this to change the quantity if the status is building, perfect. Now, let's hide that. Now, so that lives on the actual detail level. So that lives on like this record level right here. Okay, so now one of the things that I wanted to do was when somebody clicks on that specific record in this view that we're looking at right here. So I'm looking at the order detail, just a parent. When they click on a child and the child doesn't have a quantity, I wanted to execute that input thing. Otherwise, I wanted to go to the record. Okay, there's three things you need in order to make that work. The input part, right? That's the one I just built. I also need two other ones. I need uh, a deep link, deep link navigation. So that's an action that will take me to the detail view of the record that I just clicked on. I have to have an actual, re uh, I have to have an actual action that does that. And I also need a group action, a composite action that executes both of those. And so then I have to have conditions on either of these so that they don't execute at the wrong times. So let's go and do the first part, which would just be um, the group. So on the order details, I need a, it's down here at the very bottom, execute a sequence of actions. Uh, and again, I can hide this. I don't need to see it. And so the sequence is not gonna have any condition. This is something that's like, it needs to execute every time you click on that row. So I'm gonna place this sequence action on the event action of when you click on this row over here in the view. I need that to happen every time. Uh, you know what I mean? It's the actions inside this stack. Those are the ones that need to have the condition. So this is gonna be like tap order detail. For this one, I actually like to use a, a finger. It's easier to spot, pull out. This is that tap action. So what do I wanna do? I want to set the quantity, right? And so this runs as long as we're not, as long as we're in the building status. Okay, so I'm just gonna copy this. And I'm gonna change these little, I'm gonna change the little bits. You'll see why. View. detail in some view up there. So first thing I need is the name of the view that I want, which is, well, it's right here actually. So I just click this, it'll go to the detail view, come down here, I can copy it, and I can use my browser back button, take me right back where I was. Isn't that awesome? Yeah, and we can do that, drop that in there. So now view order detail in order details detail. Nice system, system name. Thing I need to do is go to another view within this app. The target is link to row, and the row is this order ID. It's the ID of this record, and I want to go to that view. Wait for it to validate. I always wait for it to validate. Boom. And now the reason I copied it is because now all of this stuff is already set where I need it, and this is basically set where all I gotta do is change this to, don't know if it's complete or completed. Where you go look, complete, okay. And then I can just use my browser back button to get right back where I was. All right, so this runs when it's complete. So now I'm gonna add that into this. So now when I execute this tap action, what happens here is both of these actions fire off, the ones inside the stack, but each of those have their conditions on them, so only one will fire off at one time because you're never gonna have an order that's in both of those statuses. They're mutually uh, exclusive in this way. So now, I take this composite action, let me shrink things down, I take this composite action, and I need to put that on the view event for this guy right here. So I come into here, uh, the, okay, so the easiest way to get to that inline view, right, is like I'm here on the parent level, click the view button for that child view, it makes it full screen, and then you can come down here and use the view link to get to that view. And so the thing that I want to do here is I want to take over the event action. So if I scroll down to the behavior section, we have this 
row selected, change this to my tap action that I did. I'm gonna save it so it propagates. All right, so go back here. When I'm looking here, you can see I've got this quantity that needs to be updated. So when I tap on it, boom shaka laka. I would like 50, please. Thank you very much. Now I can tap it again and get 50 again. Okay, I'm gonna leave it at that because there are some more advanced things that you can do to make this a little nicer, make it a little more of a robust interface. Uh, like uh, I think at the beginning of the stream, I talked about like, oh, well, I'll make it to where if there's nothing there, you can do it the first time. If the, And then after that, don't bother. I'll save that for another video. The So this sets up so that I can click on it and I have the quantity thing. So now essentially what I need to do is that when I click a product here, I essentially need to execute the thing that I just made on the record that I just made. Do you get with me? Like I just created a system of actions to where I can click it and it'll give me an input dialog. I need to execute that on the record that I make when I tap something like that, right? So I'm really doing two things when I tap on this thing. I need to create the record and then execute that action on that record. How do you do it? So first off, you gotta, you gotta pay attention to the table context because that determines where your actions have to live in order to execute off. So like this list of products, if you come down here, you can see the table link is the products table. So I have to have an action on the products table that says execute the thing for that, execute the uh, quantity update action for the record that I just made, right? That has to live here on products. Okay, so we just come here, go here, new, it lives on products. The thing that I need to do is I need to execute an action on a set of rows. It's gonna be on the order detail. And this is where at the beginning of this whole thing, I put together this little formula right here. So I'm gonna copy this. That's where this comes into play. I have this last order detail item. This is the ID of that, that record as a global variable in this building orders slice. So I can just take this, that formula that I have and drop it in here. And since this is a, it needs a list, I can just get rid of the index part. Boom, that gives me the last item that was made. And now what do I do? I want to set the quantity, right? Oh man, you can even, you can even pass fun little uh, thing. That's a, that's a newer little thing with that later Ooh, fun um all right so i have this action this is um let's see ref set uh, item quantity from a product all right so here 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 i'm down here i don't need to see it go away i'll leave that alone so that it always executes okay so this action by itself, if I was to execute it on a product, it would look for whatever the last item is and execute this on that item. So there's a disconnect there, right? So now I need to make sure that when I execute this item, it, it's only executing for the, hmm, I was gonna say for the last, for the product that matches the product, but I'm gonna leave that alone. Again, see there's all of these like advanced little things that you can do to kind of solve little holes and to automate little things and just like rounding off the edges. There's little things you can do. Save all those for another video. So what I need to do now is that on this products page, when I tap a product, I need to do two things. I need it to add the product and then execute this ref set thing. Now I already have a tap product action that if there's already a duplicate it says hey do you want to do the duplicate you sure about that so if there's not a duplicate that's skipped and then it adds the item and then so you can see i've got another one of these dual purpose things where like if we're building something it does these two if we're not building something if we're not building an order then when i tap on a product we'll view the product instead 
because there's no open order for me to add any of these items to. You dig? So I just need to add into this list, into this little thing right here, this little ref set quantity update and just put it right at the end of the list. At the end of this, you could almost think about this as like, it's a two part list. There's those, those three, and then there's this one. I could put something else inside that on the other side of that equation if you really wanted to. Did you get what I mean? By doing that, what I'm doing now, let me save this so it propagates. By doing that, what what's gonna happen here is that when I tap on one of these products to add it to the order, it's gonna then execute the quantity thing. Now there are some things that we need to clean up for that because like, we'll get to that, <laughs> jumping ahead. So let's see it, boom, right? I could say I want five of that product. I clicked on product four, if I go look at this, product four has five already. Like product two, I can say I want two of that, boom, right? So now I can come back here and I can be like, I want five, 15 of product one, and if I go in and look at it, 15 of product one. Yeah, buddy. So now some, some peculiarities that we got to account for, right? So like what happens if I tap something and I say yes, okay? And then I say, if I give it an annoying number so I can find it. Okay, so totally worked. Totally worked as it should. Uh, the thing that I was afraid of there was that it would try and do the quantity on some other record, but I guess it does. It would never do that because it's always, always, always doing the last one for the uh, the building order. Hey, so that is all it takes to update an app to where when you tap add something to another record, really what's happening there is when I click this, I'm creating a record in another table. Um, and then that record, I'm gonna update that record. This is how you do it, just like that. And this could be anything. It doesn't have to be a quantity. I could input any of the columns inside here. If there was a note field, I could add a notes inside this input field. Um, if I wanted to show the product, I could show the product. I think that would give the person the ability to change the product in that input. So maybe that might be a thing that you might want to do. Anyways, so there's a whole bunch of stuff that's there's a whole a whole bunch of advances that you can continue to do with this app. And I plan on doing that in the future. This is just number three. But this essentially now is a basically done sample app. There's a few little things that I need to do in order to um, actually push this out. I like to kind of round little things off. I'll go do some of the about information and all that, but functionality's done. So now we can move on to this next part, the part that's actually answering Brad's question, which if you're just joining me, the whole point of all of this was, let me get to it. The whole point of all of this was to answer a question that Brad had about